Wassail. So, apologies for the terrible lighting. There's such a storm of wind um, outside. And on Sunday, the little crack that I had in my phone split and went right across the lens of my camera. And then yesterday morning, suddenly, <clears throat> brand new energies started to uh, present themselves to me and had no camera to do any of the work on. Um, you will be able to see the cards as I bring them close, but I'll just have to remain slightly in the shadows. Well, maybe that's the point of the message. I'm not the important part of the message. The message is the important part. So uh, I just wanted to talk about how there's been all these kind of energetic blockages going on since Lunar Eclipse, well and before as we were leading up to it. And I thought um, it was wonderful to see Rob of Rob's Tarot talk so openly about this and about changing formats. And actually, rather weirdly today, I'm working on a change of format because I've had a series of snapshot readings all morning yesterday before I had to go off and get my phone fixed to do with higher dimensional beings. So contact from Orions, Syrians, Palladians, um, Lyrans, Vagans. And when I was in Lagos, uh, there was a sense of the Andromedans wanting to come through as well, but they want to be alive reading. These I'm doing as a series of readings where I have the layout of the mystical shaman's cards, mystical shaman cards that gave me the original readings, and then I'm going to add tarot live now to the readings to see if we can get them to unfold. So this first message is from the higher dimensional beings. We would use the semantic name of Orions so that we can understand. And I want. I kind of just want to say that we all need to remember that we've we've all been and all are all of these things. Um, so, you know, people who are star seeds, don't focus on that energy too much. We're all at the moment earth seeds. We're here in this incarnation with a purpose. I mean, you know, maybe these readings are about identifying the aspect of the energy frequency you need to be working with at the moment, but ultimately we're all working with all of them. But I do need to say, I kind of want to say, this is the thunder beings, the, this first, this is blue lunar storm. And I've been joking all morning, <laughs> which is be afraid. Be very afraid. So, you don't have to be, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, but you do, you do have to appreciate that these are higher dimensional beings and they are operating on higher dimensional universal laws and frequencies that don't make sense to us down here. And there are many parts of them where we seek a kind of comfort blanket of them being these wonderful benevolent beings. But look, in the higher dimensions, you are the full aspect of dark and light. And they understand and work with both the dark chaos and the light, the love. So what their purpose and their journey is completely different to how we conceive of things so I want to kind of say to everybody in the spiritual world stop hiding behind love and light because you don't get any love and light if you don't look at the chaotic shadows that also exist I can't say this enough but I will keep saying it you have to do shadow work we all have to do shadow work we're being faced next year with what this reading's about. This reading is really about the energies building up now, leading us to 2021, which is the judgment of the world. And there's all kinds of amazing things coming next year, but there is a sense of two frequencies eventually. At the moment, there's a myriad of frequencies. Everyone has their own 
dimensional reality for the time being and it won't solidify until some point next year and I don't know when that is but you have to accept that if you live in the energy of fear you will stay in the global frequency of fear which is folding in on itself if you can maintain through shadow aspect work shadow walking to move towards the light and look, Miss Remy did the most amazingly authentic, raw, beautiful reading, which won't be up now, um, I doubt. She was going to leave it up for a day. But she's been on the most amazing um, shadow walk, and it's been so painful for her, and yet she's passed through it, and she's feeling so much more integrated. But also, which is the beautiful part, she's really in touch with her chaos and her darkness and those deep uh, energies of, uh, like, Lilith. So, anyway, hi, Reem. Beautiful song. Um, let's just dive into this, because, honestly, it's not about me and I'm talking too much already. So, this Orion message opens with... The Thunder Beings and the Journey to Soul Retrieval. So we have the Thunder Beings. This is Blue Lunar Storm Frequency. And they are all rushing in, these Thunder Beings, these higher dimensional beings from, as I'm saying, Orion, so that it makes a kind of sense to people. They're coming in to do the soul retrieval journey of the world, of the earth. 2021 being the frequency of the earth. This soul journey card is 29, 11. 11 is the frequency of the earth grid. And that is changing. It's the earth has been... Oh, they're saying to me, caught in an 11 frequency, and then it's been overlaid with a 12 frequency around the globe, which has been affecting us in a kind of element of being controlled, being um, suppressed, and we're moving it to 13 frequency. But it's just interesting because... You have 2-9, and the Thunder Beings are coming in with 11 frequency as well. 5-6 is 11. So we've got an 11-11 here. And in between, the Soul Retrieval is 49, which is 13. The Retrieval of the Soul is when we step outside of the old frequency and move to this new 13 frequency. And that is all about flow. Being with the flow, feeling the creativity, being connected to uh, spirit and intuition and the uh, luminous warrior. And that's the eclipse, remember? So let's throw some tarot cards onto this first little part. I'm using the Muse tarot for this. There's a lot more cards. There's a lot more information. There's too much information. I'm having, I'm having a bit of a head melt. And the energies are doing mad things. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's that kind of... Uh, there's a celebration behind this energy, but we've got to get through it. So, thunder. Oh, look, there you go. That's exactly the frequency we're currently in. Eight of Swords, feeling trapped, looking to spirit for assistance. But not looking to spirit for assistance with that kind of, ooh, fly. There's not been a fly forever. Look, it's just landed right on my third eye. So, um, it's in the darkness. This is a card saying, shadow walk, people. Shadow walk. That was, was so weird, seeing on my third eye. So, I don't know who sent that, but I suspect it was Summer Ryan. Right. 
Oh, okay. We have another eight. Eight eight Lions Gateway Cub Portal that was on the eighth of the eighth. This is our luminous warrior and our divine feminine consciousness coming into balance, but you've got to shadow walk. If you look at my readings back to the eighth of the eighth, there's a whole series of readings. If you don't know how to do this shadow walking, go back to them. Look at the Sadir magic that we looked at as a, as a group here. Look at ways in which you can face your shadows and integrate things because I'm not saying time's running out. Time isn't running out as such because time doesn't exist. But there are linear moments that are coming. So the energy of the, the luminous warrior, the solar eclipse, on the 14th of December is part of the great conjunction on the 21st. Now, not everybody is going to wake up and have a massive epiphany at that point. But the energies will stay current once they're resonating from within the earth grid. And that's what the Orions are doing. They're bringing that energy in. So, 8-8, eight, eight, change, change. It's inevitable. Go with it. Now, this one's really interesting. This three of voices is talking about... Look, when I look at astrology, I look at tropical quite a lot. I look at sidereal to understand how the planets are actually functioning within the constellations that they're currently sitting in, in actuality. And I also look at heliocentric for sound healing. And in the heliocentric aspects at the moment, um, as we reach the Great Conjunction, there are three threads of energy that are going to be coming in to the Earth. The first thread is obviously Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto. And that's a very... They're like three knives, these, these things. And they're coming into our bodies to heal us. And those three knives are coming with... Uh, you've got Jupiter, G, Saturn, F. So that's energy wings. Lower heart, where we love the Earth. And that's what this reading's about, the Earth and the crystalline grid. And then you've got Pluto, which is uh, the spine and the nervous system wiring. Oh, it's the spine, but it connects to the nervous system. We'll get to that one. And so that is a cluster driving through like a knife, cutting into our bodies on the 21st. The next one is a lineup that's taking place around that period. I think nearer the 23rd, it gets more perfect, of Gaia. Shh, here it is. Um which is B, lined up with Mars, which is C, our molecules that belong to the Earth. So you've got B and C, that's another knifey cluster, lined up with the Moon coming down to the Earth, and that's an A. So this is another of these sort of searing knives coming into our body to kind of cut open our energy frequencies so that the traumas can be released. What are the traumas? Their series... Chiron and Neptune who are down the other area and they're kind of singing the notes of um, we have Neptune on E flat Ceres on D the sacral the luminous warrior so bringing deep dark old ancestral issues in our DNA driving into them cutting through them and that's got the B flat of the nervous system of Chiron so th this is talking about and look, again, it's shadow. You know, I want, I want, or the Orions want to say, you need to weep about some things. You need to feel the sadness so that you can integrate why knowing that darkness makes you stronger. Open yourself up to the interdimensional frequencies of universal law that the Orions are working with. So next we have... 47 and 50, we have the smoky mirror and the spiral. Now, this is the fractal frequencies at the centre of the crystalline grid growing to clear the smoky mirror, but not of us, but of the soul of the earth. It's the global heart of the earth that is being transformed. And that's what the Orions are working on. So, 
Let's have some tarot for this. Three. Okay, this is another card. <laughs> I may as well just... <laughs> I may as well just say that this is a video called Shadow Work, Shadow Work, Shadow Work. This card yesterday, or the day before, began to become the card of facing shadows, opening portals, and walking through the portals. Obviously, I, you, know, you don't walk through them. The energy transcends and, and wipes it uh, and, and, and pours its way through you. Um, but that's what this card is doing. Your shadow self, oh, it's very difficult. The lighting's so awful because here there are only really tiny windows because in the summer your house would be too hot. Now in the winter there's not enough light in here and I can't go outside because the wind will blow us all away. Your light and your dark, bringing them together. But look, it's just saying here, wily fox people, you've got this. You can move towards this new energy frequency. <clears throat> and then we have the eight of materials. Look, eight, eight, eight now. We've got three eights. This is the key. The eight of materials is the key to the physical reality. And that's what the Orion's message is, the physical reality. She's playing yo-yos with all of these roses. But the interesting part is, the, this side of her, this side of her, the left, which in sound healing deals with the past, it's all completely covered in tattoos. And the future is as yet unwritten because that's where we're heading. So understand, no that you've got the key to move through this and to move through the new growing fractal frequencies of the earth to weave a new dimensional reality that's being brought down by these higher dimensional beings from Orion. So they're putting some more information in my head, but it's coming later, I think. So let's just move on to the next part. Two, six, five, one, two. We have this fractal frequency that the Orions are working on in the crystalline grid is about the heart of the earth. The hummingbird always talks to me about bringing the two heart chakras together. And it's also about bringing the energy frequency of the earth into a new 13 frequency which will allow us to unite our lower and higher hearts and heal that fractal break that has that had to be there previously in order for us to incarnate on the earth and then we have the beloved the heart of the earth. This is the Orions holding the earth in love. And there are Orions, and I want to say Aquafarians because that's another word I use to describe ancient beings. We're all Aquafarians. In our soul pots, we're all Aquafarians in aspects of our life. Um, you know, we know no one's more special than anyone else. That's the whole point of what we're trying to learn with this collective frequency. It's just some people are facing their shadows and so they're further along their journey. But we're all on the same journey, but we're all walking with a different map. So don't concern yourself if things here don't resonate with you. And then we have, oh, the fly returning to me. <laughs> And then we have 12. This hummingbird heart change that the Orions are bringing is trying to tell us that everything, everything of the past, everything of the past that was written and seen, understood and not understood, 
was all part of a divine detour. But I want, they want me to say not a detour. This is divine detours, but a divine plan. Uh, yeah, it, everything we've ever been through was always intended. And again, I'm getting this energy. Uh, the coyote is almost weeping because we've never understood how important every trauma that has ever been experienced is to the healing of where we're heading as we move into next year with 2021. So let's now throw down some tarot. Okay, we've got three. So we have Ten of Inspiration. This is talking about how this is fractals. This is the energy that's been repeating, 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 over and over again throughout time, echoing through time, is now being brought to a conclusion. And we have this Fall card. So it's going forwards. We're filling our sacral, our jug, our seat of emotions, our soul pot, what little of our soul pot we're able to carry here on earth. And we are taking that energy, that understanding, and we're stepping into a new cosmos. And they're saying to me that this is a reminder of how everything moves um it's not just about how we go around the sun the sun goes around on its own orbit and the planets as they move around orbits are also being swung around in other directions and um, the velocity at which the sort of average speed that we're moving through the cosmos is they said about three six nine plus or ten kilometers a second three six nine Tesla magic code. So the, sorry, I'm This is talking about um, Andromeda and the Milky Way. The, the two galaxies are moving together. I won't say very slowly, but it's obviously very fast in certain ways, but just linearly slow. And this is the trigger point for turning everything on its head now, the muse, the hanged muse, seeing everything differently, somersaulting, we're going through a massive energetic transformation. So that's those. Now we have two beautiful cards, and this is this card, the Council 11 and Water 61. The, these are representing um, Andromedans. For some reason, originally, uh, the frequency, the dimension at which this card is coming at is much higher than I always used to think of the ninth dimension. This card is becoming something on a dimension much closer to source. Um, and they're talking about, because we've got 1161, which is a divine nine. This is a, um, an energy of, as the heart of the earth changes to 13 frequency, slowly everything will, will feel this new energy coming out that's no longer this restrictive 12 frequency and it will change things on a molecular atomic level it's like because we've moved through the galaxies and we're in a new part of energy frequency a new music of the spheres movement water is going to change its frequency i've long had messages of water purifying and it's not as simple as purifying. Water is the Akashic Records. It, it, we drink it, it passes through our bodies. It's out there, it's in the air, we breathe it in. It's integral to 
to the whole of existence but it's also it's it's integral to a frequency that we resonate and slowly over the next year this frequency of water is going to adapt and change and is going to bring about a body healing um, in many ways not though I want to say an emotional healing that's coming up in another reading later which is to do with light workers and, and their purpose and why people are here to be light workers but for now the Orions want you to know through the language, the light language of the Andromedans, that water is changing. The frequency will begin to create healing miracles. So let's give a, can we please have a little bit of clarification on this water energy, this divine water energy. that one we've just got one i want to see if i get another one but they're kind of saying leave it oh no. <laughs> thanks i see why so five of materials look this is like us broken and all around us again is the world of shadows the world of fears the world of darkness these restrictions this energy frequency that holds us back. So, this is the portal of 13 frequency. It's kind of Gates of Ishtar. It's kind of more cosmic than that. Maybe we should call it the Gates of Orion or the Gates of Andromeda uh, is probably better. Um, the energy is coming whether you pay attention or not it will eventually come everybody will eventually face shadow work with light workers this is the energy of the cosmos of the andromedans pulling this frequency towards you even if you're not looking it will come but that's no excuse for saying you don't have to engage in shadow work the best shadow work anyone can do is themselves, on themselves. Because if you can do and face your own shadows, you become a frequency of a light worker. So you don't need a light worker to try and help you because that's an energy that's coming next year or even later, I don't know. But there's definitely that energy. So this purifying of the water is about purifying shadows not just in ourselves but these are shadows that go all the way back in time through the dna look we're all here at this moment um regardless of where we think we might be in a cosmic spiritual pathway old soul young soul we're all old souls it's just we're all at different points on the map um Wherever we are, we've all got to do the shadow work at some point. We've got to work on that because we're here to clear up the old distortions, the old 11, 12 frequency um, DNA traumas that have been echoing out of our bodies and attracting those same traumas like magnets to us. So then, the next part of this reading is three 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 the arrow and the magic you just have to give me a moment because they they gave me two versions of this it was about piercing the soul but it was actually about something else earlier when i laid the cards down and it's now moved from my mind it's part of the pathway um <clears throat> it's about the direction of the frequency Obviously, it's again a nine. It's three, three, three. Um, I'm going to have to just pull the cards because um, in talking to you, that energy frequency has just got slightly lost. 13 frequency, death and rebirth. It's all so beautiful. we've got another eight so um, I want to say 
we've got the five of voices and the two of voices, but the message is the same. Untangle yourself from the old you. This is blue lunar storm frequency. It's about finding your truth. Um, there's some amazing stuff coming up and uh, that's in the cosmos that you can witness with your eyes. But one of the things that is coming up has to do with um, Gaia shh, Uranus, um, on the moment of the moving into midnight on the 24th going into the 25th, which is about that idea. Forget Christmas, forget Hanukkah for the moment. Think of it as um, a planetary solstice. It's the point at which the sun is reborn and it's the point at which the energy frequency for our consciousness has a chance to be reborn because there's a conjunction with the moon um, taking place at that moment. So, um, And it's about living authentically. Um, and that's what this is doing. It's asking us to look at who we were and who we will be. And again, look, this pathway is there again. Go into the pathway of the shadows because there's an olive branch. You're being helped and guided, but we're working on these two portals. You've got to walk into the dark and come out through the light. That um, vaticinium um, tunnel that I talked about in a reading when I was in Faro, which was to do with the via combustor. Because we're still in, at the moment, the dark of the dark in terms of astrological thing. It's excellent time to face shadows. And it's like we're being, we've got the eight of inspiration. So we've now got four eights. All the eights, all the change frequency. Rushing now. Speed with which things are picking up. This conjunction, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto just behind, still not fully involved, but that's the planet of death and rebirth. We're hurtling in to this frequency of transformation. And down here, we separated the birth, the, 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 the dark shadowy side, and we're integrating and transforming that energy before we wake up into the new frequency of being integrated. Now, the next part is 2352. This again is Orion frequency reaching and pulling down energies from the entire cosmos to bring the earth to a standstill. Um, there's a there's a part of the energy that's been the whole of this year about isolating ourselves and it's beginning to create all kinds of problems psychological traumas actual physical body traumas of being imprisoned in your own homes but we've had to go through these frequencies because we're reaching a point at which we need to wire ourselves into our own truth you know not who do you think you are but who are you really living authentically and there's a there is a sense over this the rest of this month that we might begin to feel even more at a standstill but a standstill globally and that's the really important part in the three days between the december solstice and moving into the rebirth of the sun on that midnight 24 going into 25 is a really important frequency and look I, I, I kind of I just want to say to people we always have this thing that we say oh it will be terrible to be alone at Christmas why you know we're putting a kind of energetic purpose on that without thinking it through there's a, there is a sense of, I don't mean, you know, isolate yourself, but don't fear being in your own frequency. Don't feel over this period that you need to resonate 
with these old fractal frequencies of expectation of others and family and friends, try to live authentically, as authentically as you can, as we head towards the end of this year and move into 2021. So, the standstill is to inspire us. This is that Uranian living authentically energy coming in and it's almost they want to say the uh, the they want to say it's like they want to give you a medal of achievement if you can get there but by getting into your true authentic frequency you trigger emotional feminine empress energy look the entire cosmos in alignment within and I want to say within your heart, not your lower heart and your higher heart, but this awakening of the crystalline grid's single new frequency that's bringing this change, it's bringing us into our true Oh my god, 13 frequency flow, I was going to say. One and three. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit exciting. Because we've got this 13 here, this is the rebirth. Standing still into the rebirth. Now, <clears throat> the reading ended with a reference to the taming of the wind. Now, the taming of the wind is 55. It's that fifth dimensional frequency that we're working towards. How you want to understand that is totally on your own map. Um, but it also ends with the Time Master. And the Time Master has, just like this card has become the Andromedans, this has become the Orions, this is the Palladians and the uh, mystical shaman has become the Syrians and the ancient ones is a representation of the Lyrans and the vegan, Vegans. Vegans. <laughs> it's the Suzanne Vegans. Um, so this is the energy of how when the solar cosmic winds tame inside the earth and then echo out, changing everything on a quantum physics, atomic, subatomic level, then we hand over to the energy of the Palladians. And the Palladians have got a separate message, which I will go on to do, that we can understand later. I might try and record it today, but I won't put it out today. Because I can't, <laughs> I can't keep up with all the beautiful messages you're sending me. Uh, I switched on my iPad and there was 119. And I just thought, oh, I can't. Because I'm being downloaded with so much information at the moment. But I will get there and I do read every message. So stay with me. So final, 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 please. Ooh. Final, final, final. Right, um, and I don't know why. We've got the Ace of Materials, the new beginning in the real world. That's beautiful. And we've got the Six of Voices being carried across by the Orions across this difficult transformation of water. The old, difficult energy frequencies being lifted across. But I'm also being given the frequency of um, coming solar eclipses, but I really didn't want to bring them into the equation at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just take the Mystical Shaman deck and throw one last card. And if it presents me with something that needs to bring up the solar eclipse information now, I'll do it. If it doesn't, we'll leave it at that. So, J 
Do you want to say something about the solar eclipses next year? Do you want to say something about the solar eclipses next year? Because it's related to this subject and the thunder beams <laughs> are bringing the lightning. The thing that lights up the DNA blueprint transformation as we go through this energy of the water frequency changing on the subatomic quantum physics level. So just as we end, it's to point out, this is about the Orions working on the frequency of the Earth grid. Next year, there are two solar eclipses. The first is on uh, the 10th of June. And that's over the uh, South Pole. And then the one on the 4th of December is over the North Pole. It's just very interesting that the solar eclipses are working on the energy either side of kind of like there's a figure in here and this is about energizing things through the spine through the pluto energy and i said one of the cards earlier had pluto sitting out watching uh because it's roll oh look it's there with the arrow um th this is coming at a later point but it's about lining up the the polarity and reattuning the entire globe okay so that's my message again sorry about the lighting but the message is the part and i'm sure you could see the card so it's uh time for the palladians next so enjoy this message and wassail